Hey, this is Nate Story with Bright Agritech, and uh, today I'm going to follow up on my previous video uh, regarding sump tanks and single pump systems. So in the last video, there's a lot of folks that kind of commented and said, well, you know, I've built a lot of these kinds of systems, or I've, I've seen them, or I don't really understand why, um, you know, splitting water flow is better than just having basically your fish tank, you know, uh, above your plant uh, production bed, right? Um, above your sump tank, right? With your sump tank coming back up here and dumping into your fish tank. So in this system, you know, folks are saying, well, we've got a pump, right? We've got this pump and it's a single pump system. So, you know, we're not dealing with, uh, you know, two, two uh, failing pumps, whatever. Um, and we can use, say, like an SLO, okay, to pull off of um, our fish tank and send it down to our plants if we want to. So we can always maintain our water level in our fish tank. That's, that's not an issue here. And you know, the plants get as much water as they need. They can run on a bell siphon or whatever. Um, and then, of course, they drain back down to the sump. So the, uh, you know, th this, is, this is absolutely true. And this is just kind of your standard gravity-fed system, right? Um, and we can, go, we can go either way with this. I mean, we can switch these elements around if we wish. We can put the uh, fish below the plants. It doesn't really matter because it's all in a, all in a single line. Um, but the important thing to remember here, and, and there's, there's a few different considerations, but one important thing is the, is the fact that um, this isn't under pressure, right? So this is a pressurized line here, right? You have pressure from your pump up to your fish tank, and then from your fish tank down or from your plant production tank down, whichever one you're uh, you know, feeding from, this is all gravity fed from here on out. So it's all very low pressure. So the problem isn't necessarily with this type of a system, but it is, uh, it does start to become a, a problem when you add, say, another tank down below the topmost tank. So to do this, we're, we're going to have to increase our volumes, but that's really difficult to do under a gravity-fed system. We basically have to increase the diameters of all of our piping. So this type of a system, it works very nicely if this is going to be the size it always stays, and we don't need pressure in our plant production subsystem. So we're not running NFT, we're not using towers, we're not using really anything that requires for us to put pressure into that, into that subsystem. So um, this works just fine when it's this size, but as soon as we decide to scale, right, which is one of the nice benefits of aquaponics is we can change our stocking densities or our feeding rates and we can scale it very quickly. The, the problem is that this be rapidly becomes untenable if we decide to scale our plant production subsystem or scale our fish production subsystem. So um, one of the nice things is having all of our subsystems, okay, our plant subsystem and our fish subsystem fed under pressure. And that's one of the nice things about splitting flow is that you always have pressure to all of these different elements of your system. It allows you to blow things out. So if, you're, uh, if you have issues with biofilms, if you have issues with algae or something like that, it allows you to overpressurize, you know, feeds to a certain subsystem. And one nice thing too, uh, with if both of these are draining back to our sump tank, right? Our plants and our fish, it allows us to turn off water to one or the other. So it allows us to turn off water to our plants if we wish or turn off water to our fish. Um, when these are in a straight line, right, when fish goes to plants, goes to sump tank, if we turn off the water from our fish to our plants, then everything stops, right? Everything stops. Our fish water overflows onto the floor and uh, we can't return it to our sump tank unless we start doing really complicated things like installing um, kind of overflow systems and uh, that kind of thing. So it's really good to be able to um, split our flow. So I'm gonna erase this now and do a really quick diagram kind of showing you what, a little bit better what I mean. All right, so this is basically a crude mock-up. Again, um, Rob, I know that you remarked on my fine artistry, my, my skills with a pen here, and I'm gonna show these off today, right? We've got our um, plant production towers, okay? And um, we've got our, our plant production subsystem, right subsystem uh, and our fish production subsystem 
And both of these are fed from a sump tank. So our pump pumps up and splits the water to both our fish and our plants. And both of these then drain back to our sump tank. So the way we have it set up is we've got valves here and here. So say on an exceedingly cold night, uh, 50 degrees below zero, and we're worried about maintaining temperatures uh, in here for our plants while simultaneously maintaining the, the uh, temperature of our water for our fish, we can turn off the water to our plants overnight. So the, the plants, just, they just go overnight and it might get down into the 40s or the 30s in the greenhouse if it's a super, super cold night. Um, and the water just circulates, be, in, uh, circulates like this from our fish to our sump to our fish to our sump to our fish. And uh, that's a really nice thing for us to be able to do, but it's only possible with a split flow single pump system, right? Similarly, if uh, for some reason we want to turn off the water to the fish, we want to drain the fish tanks and continue to run the plant subsystem, we can do that. So we can drain all of the water out of our fish production subsystem and only grow our plants. At some point, if we decide to spray our plants with a pesticide that's dangerous to our fish, again, we just turn off um, our valve from our plants to our pump. We turn off the water to our plants and they're totally separated at that point. And we actually have another drainage system off of our plants that allows us to evacuate all of the water to a waste sump. Uh, if we ever need to do that. Uh, similarly with the fish, we can evacuate all of the fish uh, to someplace other than our sump tank. So what that does for us is it gives us complete flexibility in how we deal with our plants and how we deal with our fish. We can separate different sections of uh, the system and continually run the other. Um, similarly, you know, we can uh, we can just basically treat these as autonomous units if we ever have to. For instance, if for some reason we had some horrible accident and you never rule these things out uh, with our fish and we wanted to run our plants, uh, you know, we could fill up our sump with tap water, pour in some hydroponic solution and turn on our plant production system. Totally separate from the fish, okay? The fish are completely gone at this point and we've got a hydroponic system. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things where this split flow concept, um, a lot of people want to shy away from it again, but it can be very, very helpful in managing subsystems individually and managing your system as a whole, while simultaneously using only a single pump and a single sump tank uh, to, to make everything happen. So I hope that really uh, clears up a lot of um, some of the questions about why I cho choose the um, split flow single pump system. And uh, it, again, you know, it just allows us to exact really, really fine control over each subsystem. It allows us to run them both individually and it allows us to scale very, very easily. So um, if you appreciate some of the information you're getting, we'd ask that you please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and definitely check out our vertical food blog. Again, I try to write blog posts on all the different subjects that we post videos on so that you've got it in writing.